Hello, this is Galactic Greggs coming to you from an undisclosed location somewhere in the Milky Way galaxy. And I've got news for you. Jupiter's been hit by an asteroid and Earth has had several near misses. Several recent flybys have, have skipped by Earth, but Jupiter was hit on the 7th of August. And Earth's most recent miss, near miss, was just uh, the 10th of August, which was yesterday as of the time of this recording. Now that's most interesting because that near miss was an object larger than the uh, Empire State Building. In fact, that was uh, asteroid 2006 QQ23. That asteroid was, uh, well, if it had hit us, it would have been uh, not the best day we've ever seen. So let's have a look at some of this stuff here. It's, well, it's all begs the question. I mean, is this like some kind of cosmic warning shot or warning shots? Uh, is this coming from the universe, from the greater creator, trying to tell us, hey, you know, how's that space program coming? You know, that's some, what some people say an asteroid or a comet is. It's the message to ask us, how's our space program coming? Well, guess what? Uh, we had a very interesting set of coincidences back on the 25th anniversary of the moon landing the first moon in fact it started on the day of the launch on the 16th of july in 1994 on the 25th anniversary of the moon launch uh comet shoemaker levy 9 had broke into 21 pieces and those fragments started impacting jupiter on that day and i mentioned this in this video up here that you'll see reference now that's kind of interesting because those impacts bracketed that mission with the largest fragment hitting on the anniversary of the landing date itself. So that was very coincidental. So what happens on the 25th anniversary of all of that, we suddenly get a whole lot more excitement of things passing by Earth. And in fact, on the anniversary of the splashdown day, we had three asteroids. Three asteroids in one day made near flybys Earth, near misses. And then the following day, one come out of nowhere and flew in uh, under the distance between, less than the distance between Earth and the moon, within the Earth-Moon space, and a near miss of an asteroid, one that we did not even detect. So that is most interesting. Now, we know of uh, 1,983 potentially hazardous asteroids that could strike Earth and cause global catastrophes or at least very major severe local catastrophes. And that one was a new one. So uh, how many more do we have? The estimates have been like 2,000, but we keep finding so many that estimate might be a bit low. And then consider just all the recent near uh, misses. So does that bring attention to us? Is this telling us something? Should we wake up and do something about the asteroids? Well, look at this page. You can see the cursor I'm dragging across it. This is the fragments of uh, Comet Shoemaker Levy 9 that went after Jupiter. And on Jupiter, they exploded into fireballs larger than Earth. And they left big black smudges. Well, that was a comet, a large comet that broke into nine pieces. But just since then, there have been seven impacts, seven being a significant number because 21 is seven times three. And seven is considered a significant number in the Bible uh, for God and three for man or something like that. I'm not a numerologist, but uh, so we had uh, three asteroids passed by Earth the day of the uh, impact. And seven have hit Jupiter since uh, that time, uh, and including this one that just hit on the 10th of August. Excuse me, the 7th of August. It was announced on the 10th. So. Uh, that this is most interesting. So let me uh, show you a, a picture of that particular event right here. This was detected by uh, an astronomer uh, by the name of uh, Ethan Chapel. Now Ethan Chapel uh, was just uh, trying to look at the Perseids meteorites or Perseids meteors, excuse me, meteorites, it's brown meteors streak across the sky. I know this. I shouldn't be the guy making that kind of silly mistake. But anyway, 
the meteor shower of the Perseids is an annual meteor shower that occurs in August that we all love to look up and see. And this is a good time to be out and sit in. So the moon is starting to wax stronger now. So if you want to see it, get out. Uh, maybe uh, early morning after the moon sets might be best time to sit if you're viewing now. The Perseids are, are, are well known for giving a lot of good streaks and we're supposed to be in a pit, uh, thicker time of looking at them. Now that said, the, uh, the funny thing is, is that this astronomer just happened to have his telescope trained on Jupiter at the moment. Uh, that wasn't really his intention, but uh, he was gonna go just scanning the sky and he just happened to play back through his video, which he had, well, actually had a program detected to see flashes because they were supposed to be looking for meters and he saw the flash on Jupiter. So this is an amateur astronomer with a backyard telescope discovering an impact on Jupiter. It's amazing. These amateur astronomers also typically are the first ones to discover comets coming into our solar system. So the backyard astronomers do have a vital role. And for you guys that think that NASA invents all this stuff, uh, let me tell you something. There's a lot of people looking up and they see things. Now, for something coming in the solar system, they see it coming. So if you think some planet's going to sneak around behind the sun at us, ha, ha, ha. You got another thing coming. There's too many people watching. And that's not happening. It's this idea that something's going to sneak around behind the sun as large as a planet. <laughs> no. Uh, asteroids? Yeah. They sneak up on us all the time. They're smaller. They're harder to detect. But, uh, yeah, I know that's going to make some of you mad. And you're going to argue about it. Fine. Whatever. Take it for what it is. We can talk about that more in the future. But uh, here's, the, here's, the, here's the facts. Uh, the, uh, like I said, SO9 had hit Jupiter on the 25th anniversary of the moon landing. 50 years later, on the 50th anniversary, we had a uh, splashdown. We had three pass by Earth, one snuck the next day, and then this one. What does all that mean? Uh, Think about this. Let's let's go look at. Uh, let me uh, let me stop the share with this uh, thing here. I am going to switch over, and we're going to look at another object here, another website. I want to show you the data on this asteroid. Give me just a moment here to pull it up. I'm not the fastest on the sharing stuff here, so bam, 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 bam. We'll pull up. Uh, this thing all right this is earth this is asteroid 26 qq23 that just passed by we can kind of uh uh let's see i can glance through this i can when i'm not on here i can yeah all right that's not what i wanted to do we can play through this thing we can step it forward stepwise I said that, but apparently I don't want to play when my memory is over. Here we go. Now you can see it in slow-mo. I think I'm eating up too much memory on my computer. This so should normally play a lot faster. Here's your asteroid, and here's Earth. You can see it just crossed Earth's orbit, and it's heading back out. Well, this thing orbits really close to Earth's orbit, so the day may come that this thing might not be a near miss. It may be a hit. And that's true of all of those uh, 1983 asteroids that I mentioned. So let me uh, click through on this page and show you some more details about this. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got a lot of stuff competing with me here. Here we go. These are the asteroids from uh, spaceweather.com that it shows over a couple month period here, maybe three months, that uh, are all. Uh, close Earth approaches. And 2006 QQ23 is listed here, and it's listed as having a diameter of 339 meters. Now, a meter, you know, for us Americans is a little better than a yard. So, what this says is this asteroid is as big as three and a half football fields laid end to end. The grid irons. Three and a half. That's huge. So 339 meters. Well, what would 
you ever heard of the Behringer Crater or Meteor Crater in uh, Arizona? This is believed to have been caused by an asteroid of just 50 meters. And some people believe that threw out ejecta enough to destroy almost everything in the Calif uh, excuse me, in the Arizona area there. This, of course, this was an iron meteorite. And uh, maybe our, yeah, look at this crater. <laughs> it's not insubstantial. In fact, that crater is uh, 1.2 kilometers or 1,200 meters in diameter, which is 3,900 feet. You know, that's uh, a fair fraction of a mile, my friends. That is a big, big hole caused by a 50 uh, meter asteroid. How's a little 50 meter asteroid cause that, Greg? Well, I'll tell you what. Energy equals one half mass times velocity squared. And these things come in like at 40,000 miles an hour. They hit as hard, fast. A comet could come in at 70,000 miles an hour. There's a lot of energy packed in that. Look at what happened on Jupiter. Uh, those fireballs, great balls of fire were big as Earth. So uh, these are not things to be treated trivially and discounted. So the bad news is uh, that asteroid, 2006 QQ23 could potentially do very significant damage on Earth. It would not be an extinction level event like what took out the dinosaurs 65 million years ago, but it would be a horrible event indeed. And it could have global weather uh, ramifications. I don't know if it would go to the extent of a nuclear winter. Maybe not, probably not, but uh, it would not be insignificant by any stretch of the imagination. It might take out an entire region and it could be felt globally. It would be in many ways. Uh, so it would not, it's not expected to be an extinction level event. Uh, you know, something a half kilometer or bigger, yeah, that could be, um, but not uh, an object that size. However, um, why worry about these asteroids? We should do something about them. That's what this, you know, maybe is the message. Uh, we need to do something to deflect the threat, and there's concepts for that, and I'm going to pitch all that in a future video. I don't want to go into more detail tonight. And there's also uh, the idea that these asteroids not only are a threat, but they're a potential promise. There's asteroids that are high in, in platinum group metals, including gold. And uh, there are asteroids that are high in other resources that can be used in space and on Earth. So. The possibilities are strong that we could turn a threat into an asset. So that would be a very positive potential outcome. And that's what we ought to strive for. And in fact, uh, if we can uh, build and boost our economy by saving the world, why not? But it's going to require some investment money up front to get that process kickstarted. But in the end, we could be in a much higher level economic state globally as a civilization than we are today. That could make us legitimately a type one civilization, on, fast on our way to being a type two civilization uh, on the Kardashev scale. Now, type one controls uh, the planet, they're on the type two controls the star. Type three would be galactic. Hey, I can relate to that. So there's much to be gained by going out and dealing with these asteroids, very much to be gained. A lot of resources, and uh, if we don't, we have everything to be lost. The risk is extremely high if we do nothing. Now, I can't say we're gonna have an extinction level event tomorrow, the next day, or 65 million years from now, but the more time elapses, the more risk we incur. And with all these near misses, and with all this stuff flying around, it would not be wise to sit on our haunches and kick the can down the road. Because, and it's not just the risk, it's the opportunity. Asteroids reflect a real opportunity for us and our civilization. And we should go out and seize the day. Jeff Bezos wants to do that. And we should make sure that we do not disable him and, and hopefully enable him uh, and others to go out and take uh, those opportunities at hand. And maybe we need to, to, maybe that's not sufficient just to have guys go out, mine them away out of existence to keep them hitting us, but we also need to have direct uh, programs to mitigate the, the opportunity or the chance that these things may impact us. Uh, NASA has some plans along those lines. 
I'm not sure it's really a NASA mission because it's more of a kind of a defense mission, but somebody's got to get it started. And uh, so I will talk more about that in a future video. And I'm going to talk more about other asteroid threats. In fact, I, I plan to talk a little bit about asteroid Bennu. It's a very interesting object. So it requires and deserves a video all of its own. I will talk about large scale space settlement, space habitats, and many other things in future videos. So please do uh, click subscribe to subscribe to my channel if you've not already done that, and bang the update notification bell to get all these future updates. And check the links below to support my channel through uh, support links that I'm sharing with my sister channel, Green Gregs. And so let's uh, stop the share on that. And I just want to say, to all my watchers, thank you for watching.